Have you ever heard of this thing called war? Yeah, I had to write multiple essays on different wars for school. Why? It's crazy. I feel like this is going somewhere. I can't believe Arma actually happened. Oh, yep, there it is. Arma video. In a world where the Cold War wasn't so cold, and tensions ended up boiling between two super nations, what would happen? This seems way too dramatic. During the 40s and 50s, communism was pretty forcefully spread by the Soviet Union at the time, resulting in the Eastern Bloc or Soviet Bloc. And despite being a tiny island near Scandinavia, Nagova was another nation that ended up being ruled by a communist authoritarian government. In 1982, an uprising started in Nagova against the Communist Party who was ruling the small island with an iron fist. Despite weapons straight from Russia and much bigger firepower, the rebels and people who supported the uprising managed to overthrow the Communist Party regime on the island and take back the capital of Lipany. Vice Premier Sergei Otrovsky of the Nagova Communist Party fled from the capital to Moscow in Russia. There, he met General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party Leonid Brezhnev, a man who profited from his position so much in a reverse Grinch move his eyebrows grew two sizes too big. This meeting resulted in waves of Soviet forces being deployed to Nagova and its surrounding islands. U.S. President at the time, Michael Jordan, launched support, but unfortunately he passed away after finding his shoe brand didn't sell shoes in his size. U.S. forces helped the rebels and pushed back the Soviets from the island. In 1985, three years later, Mikhail Gorbachev becomes the president of the Soviet Union and announces the Glasnost and Perestroika reforms, welcomed by the West. However, communists in his country aren't very sympathetic to his cause. One of these men is General Alexei Vasily Guba. Dissatisfied with Mikhail pandering to the West, he goes to the Russian army and says, Uh, hey guys, could I borrow a bit of the military? Sure, what do you need? Uh, like, 4,500 soldiers with weapons to match, like, I don't know, 500,000 rounds of every ammunition you have? Does that include explosives and ordnance? Uh, yes it does, but can you have that for the ordnance? Absolutely. Super. Um, I also need, like, 200 mortars with ammo, a couple of aircraft carriers with helicopters and jets, uh, 100 armored transport vehicles, mounted artillery for both ground and air. Uh, how much artillery? Uh, I don't know. Probably enough to blow up Malaysia, like, four times. Alright. Uh, I also need 200 IFEs and fuel for everything, of course. Yep, of course. Okay, uh, your budget seems to be about 93 billion rubles. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what's all this for? Uh, peacekeeping? Okay, uh, I'll get all that for you and you can deploy them when ready. So, Alexei invades the Malden Islands, which are controlled by NATO. So NATO sends forces, but only after Alexei takes over the majority of the island to make it more dramatic. A month into the conflict, mainland Russia makes the biggest revolution of the Cold War. Oh, those weapons were for war. After making the revelation of the century, mainland Russia decides to mobilize the rest of their army. This doesn't do much. Alexei is captured and the good guys win. The campaign is overall okay, but it only really serves as a very scripted baseline for what you could potentially be doing in the editor. Vinny, how come you play Pappy games? Why do you not shoot? Arma is a series that is notorious for having an insane amount of strange keybinds. However, Cold War Assault isn't as bloated as the games that follow it. Awful keybinds are instead replaced with 1990s FPS jank. 
The armor games and most realistic shooters that came after it use a free aim system where your gun and head move semi-independently, meaning your gun has a box that it can move in before your head follows it. However, Cold Burr Assault's weapon box is a bit too big, leading to some weird aiming that takes quite a bit of time to get used to, especially if you come from the newer armor games. Movement is another janky mechanic that somehow stayed the same across every armor game that has been released, using animation-based movement that has been a big problem in a very sizable chunk of games. The thing that worsens this in Cold War Assault is that there is no lean mechanic in the game. So, aiming around corners is a game of how precisely you can push A and D on your keyboard without losing the lower half of your body to a rocket. AI is another broken part of the game. Friendly AI will either stand in the middle of the street waiting for a firing squad to come get them, or work how they're supposed to. Enemy AI is either a stormtrooper from that one scene where Han charges into a room full of them, or is an AI version of Chris Kyle. This is especially fun when using an M60 light machine gun, a real life gun that is famous for having kick equivalent to being hit by a motorcycle and being relatively inaccurate. This is painfully recreated in the game, so good luck hitting anything beyond 400 meters. Your character also seems to suffer from extreme scoliosis, making him about a foot and a half smaller than most people. What Arma really is, is a mildly functioning war crime simulator. Say, if you wanted to take a town that was occupied by Russian troops, the safest way would be to send ground troops into the town because there are also civilians in the town. However, if you are okay with acceptable collateral damage, you could take an attack helicopter and clear the town with tow missiles, getting your job done more efficiently without the use of hindrances like the Geneva Convention. Scenarios like these and more can be yours for only one payment of $4.99. I really think if you're determined enough, you could get a near infinite amount of entertainment out of the Arma games, especially with being able to completely script together extremely complex missions, not to mention all of the mods that add an insane amount of content into the game. How do you even script in this game? Why do you think I would know? Are you just mashing random buttons on your keyboard? Well, theoretically, if I do this forever, then I have to get it right at some point. Yeah, I guess you're right. Keep going at it. 